It's been more than a year that we are based in a little village in central Bulgaria. It's a half-abandoned place for people who appreciate slow, introverted and pretty much secluded life. There are many British people and my husband, who is British, bought this house years ago. He was preparing it for later and planned to live here after he retires. He wasn't planning to create a new family. Life is always full of surprises, though, and now he has us. Fortunately, this house is not too small to accommodate all of us. We came here in March of the last year, after the full-scale war started in Ukraine where we lived. The first half of the year we shared with my Ukrainian friends, but then they left. We also didn't stay here all the time, as we can't live without traveling. Last summer we spent two months in the UK and the winter in both, the UK and the Egypt. Check out my vlogs from those trips. The links are in the description. Anyway, in the beginning I didn't like the idea of living in the country, especially in such a secluded area. I was used to a megapolis that never sleeps, where you can easily get anything anytime, where you can visit concerts, events and museums, where you see a lot of people on the streets every day, where you can use public transport and taxis. A megapolis that you can easily leave to go to the countryside for a day or two. By the way, most of my life I lived in the area of Kiev next to the forest, so I took advantage of both nature and city hustle. And what's here in Bulgaria? There are no shops in our village. The closest decent supermarket is half an hour drive from here in Gabrovo. We are based among the mountains and there are not even street names in our village. There are some museums in nearby towns, but they are very small and we are not talking about culturally rich life here anyway. First I thought it's only for a short time, till Peter gets a job somewhere else. Also, when my friends lived here, I felt like life is bustling. We were always talking and going for walks together. It didn't feel secluded at all. But when they left last September and it started to get colder, I didn't feel that good anymore. Left for the winter and came back in March. I still was waiting for something to change very soon, but it didn't. I had to write my final thesis for my master's in psychology, so I searched for a kindergarten for Naomi and found it. Our daughter started visiting first for a half of a day and then for a full day. As soon as I got more free time for my projects, I realized that I quite like the countryside. For me, as for every human being, of course, balance is important. When I've got more time for my projects, such as studying, making my videos, reading and solo walks, I felt good again. Don't get me wrong, I love to spend time with my daughter and enjoy motherhood, but some free time for myself. Oh, it's so important for well-being. So now we still live in uncertainty of what future brings. My husband works in the garden, clearing it out and planting vegetables and herbs. I've started to consult people and continue studying cognitive behavioral therapy. We still don't plan to spend here the rest of our lives, but instead of being sad because I'm not in a city and can't have a culturally rich life, instead of feeling anxious about the future, I started to deeply enjoy slow living and cottage life. The number one rule of my life now is simple. Live here and now and try to do the best you can to get where you want to be. For me now it's about becoming a good consultant and video maker. Psychology and video making are my two passions now. And also I really appreciate spending a lot of time with my family. Of course I do a lot of work in the house. Here is something I want to share with you about cleaning. I always enjoyed it to a degree. Remember, balance is everything for me. Cooking, baking and even house cleaning. All this I do with pleasure. And while many people love cooking, not everybody likes cleaning. My approach to it was influenced many years ago by, you'll be surprised, a guy from Hare Krishna movement. 
I visited their temple in Kyiv a couple of times in the past out of curiosity, but mainly because you could have a nice free meal there. They cook very nice vegan food. I love it though I'm not a vegan. So after a first meal this guy addressed all the people in the temple asking them to help clean it. He said, by cleaning the house you clean your heart. Treat it as a meditative practice. Think about purifying your mind while you sweep the floor. Imagine that you undust every corner of your soul when you tidy up the premises. I was quite impressed to hear it. And even though I'm not a Hare Krishna believer, this idea stuck in my mind forever. I tried to do it at home and realized that every time I clean, I can get into a state of a flow. When I'm totally absorbed, by the process and it brings me peace and joy. Since then, when I start cleaning my home, it's difficult to stop as this work consumes me in a good way. It doesn't mean it is my hobby now and I prefer cleaning to watching a movie or reading a book, but if I have to do it anyway, I choose to enjoy. As for cooking, I prefer to cook simple, healthy dishes. Recently I discovered an awesome recipe of buckwheat tortillas green buckwheat tortillas. You can also use quinoa for this. You just soak buckwheat or quinoa or both overnight and then rinse it and then blend it. Then simply heat up a pancake frying pan and without oiling it pour the dough over and bake it. I was amazed how simple healthy and tasty this recipe is. You can wrap up anything in it, like avocado, vegetables, cheese, meat, whatever. It can easily replace bread if you want, and also kids love it as well. Naomi likes pancakes and eats these ones with pleasure as well. Cooking is another great meditative practice if you want to treat it like this and eating as well but of course you can turn into a mindful meditative practice anything you want it may seem that only because we've got a kindergarten now i started liking rural life here i'll be honest with you it's a big deal but not just this I think as soon as I started to talk about mindfulness here on YouTube, I started to practice it more myself. And slow life in the countryside creates perfect conditions for it. We live next to the wild nature and there are many animals around, including bears. And while it's difficult to see a bear if you're not hiking in the mountains, martins are frequent visitors here. And Peter is obsessed with catching them now and then bringing them to the forest. <laughs> because they can create a lot of damage in the house. Let me know if you want to see more of my village in the next video. Uh, should I do a tour 
around the area and show you more wild nature if I can. So as usual, press like, subscribe and comment on this video to support my channel. I'll be very grateful and curious what you think about it. Thank you. Bye-bye.